Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to create a background from scratch and we're going to make it look like with, using the warp tool, we're going to make it look like it's coming down and then coming, going out and straight out like it's flat at the bottom so that you can put objects in it and it'll look like they're standing on top of the background instead of the background just being pushed behind it. I saw somebody doing this in a video. They were doing it in Photoshop. So I wanted to figure out how to do it in Affinity. And in the one I watched, he cut out a dog and then he put it on the background and it created the background and everything. Um, in this video, I'm just going to focus on the background making and not the cutting out of anything because you can just add anything to it you want later. So, oh, and I'll put the link below for that video in case you want to check it out. It was really interesting, but it was in Photoshop, not use Photoshop. So the first thing you need is any size document you want. And just go up here to layer, new fill layer, make a new fill layer of whatever color you want, doesn't matter. And now we need another new document, so control N. And this one needs to be square, so we're gonna come up here and we're gonna make ours 2000 by 2000. Doesn't really matter that much. What's most important is the transparent background is selected. Click create. All right, now we need some guides. So I'm gonna come up here to view guides manager and I need to make some horizontal and vertical guides I want to cut the page in thirds so I'm going to make two guides here and just double click on it and type in the numbers you want and in this case I want 500 and the other one needs to be at 1500 and for vertical same thing just come down here and click click that twice and it'll add two new ones for you double click up there 500 1500 and now we have our page nicely chopped up for us all right now we need to add our shape and when I practice this a whole bunch of times I've used the hearts the tears the star the polygon the trapezoid the diamond I think I used almost every shape just to practice and they all worked out pretty well the hearts did tend to stretch a little too much sometimes but you know if I play around with enough maybe it would have worked out in this so for this video I'm just gonna use the ellipse tool because it's easy all right now if you hold the shift key down while you're dragging out your lips it will be a perfect circle so hold the shift key and then drag it out Dang it. you can look down here in the transform box and the width and the height should be the same oh they aren't because I let go too soon let me try again hold it pull it out and let go there we go and if you transform box isn't open just go up here to view studio and then transform and check that all right and I am going to actually make it smaller so I'm going to click over here and we're going to make it 400 by 400 the width and the height and I'm going to center it right there on these crosshairs and then I'm going to come up here to layer and rasterize it and now we're going to copy it a bunch of times. So control J, make a copy, drag that copy over here to these crosshairs on the right. And now select both of the top ones and control J, make two new ones and just drag them down to the bottom. There we go. You want it centered on the crosshairs again. And then just click on one and control J and this one we're going to drag to the center. So we want that green line and the red line. Now we know it's centered. Now just select them all and come up here to layer, merge selected. Okay, now we need the rectangular marquee tool. So click on that and then come over here and we just wanna select this inside circle. So start at one corner and drag it across to the other and it should snap in place. If you look down in the transform box over here, it should say 500, 500, 1,000, 1,000. That means that the inside has been selected. And now with this pixel layer highlighted, just do control J and that will give us a new layer of just this square. And that is what we want. So right click on it and copy and bring it back over here, back out a little bit and control V or right click and paste. All right, now this is obviously too big. So hold the control, the control key, and then shrink it. And that way it maintains the proportions. Oops, let go of the control key too soon. 
There we go. All right, now you can make it as big or as small as you'd like. And we're gonna drag it up here to this corner. And then we're going to control J, make another one. And we're gonna drag it over until it snaps in place. And now with this one still selected, if you do control J again, it will put another one right here. It'll move the new one the exact amount of space as you moved the last one. And it'll just keep doing that. So control J, control J, control J, control J, J, J. We're gonna do one more because we need, we need this pattern to be bigger than the picture. So we're gonna bring it over to the center and we're gonna bring it up. And now with this whole row selected, just control J and then drag it down and it should snap into place. And it looks like there's lines there. They're not really there. They just look like they're there. So with this row still selected, as long as you didn't unselect it and it stayed selected, you just control J and it'll move the next row right down there and just keep on going. So fast and easy. All right, now we wanna select them all and then control G, make it a group. And then come over to layer and then rasterize that whole group. Gives us a nice clean layer to work with. Now it needs to be huge because the warp tool is going to push it in. And if it if the pattern only went to the very edge of the picture, once you start pushing it in, you'd, you'd lose the pattern and it would look funny. So let's let's warp it. Come over here to the mesh warp tool and your toolbar. And if it's not up, it should be with the perspective tool. So just click on this little arrow and pull it up. Okay, now I'm gonna start at the bottom. And I'm gonna, we just wanna pull it out and up a little. We'll eventually pull it up more. So just pull these out straight and up. And then grab this handle that's going straight up, click on it. And you wanna pull it in and then stretch it out a bit too and down. Same with the other side. So click on this box, grab the handle, kind of pull it in and down. Stretch it across. You don't wanna go too far so you lose your pattern. And on the top here, we're going to, actually I'm gonna do the bottom first. So select both of these boxes and they're, if they're both black like that, then they're both selected. And that way you can just click in one and push up there. And I'm gonna do that to the top as well. Select both the top boxes and then just grab one and pull down. Now on these handles that are hanging down from the top, I want to kind of pull straight down and in a little. Same with the other side. Just pull it straight down and kind of in. See, and it flattens it right out. And you can mess with these if you want. I don't know that they really need to be adjusted too much. All right, that looks okay. You can play around with it a bit. These look a little bit too long. I probably need to bring these down some more. All right, I might even need to pull those up a bit. There we go. Yeah, pull that up just a little bit. It was a little too low. All right, that looks pretty good. Click apply. Okay, and there's our background. And that was pretty easy. And now I'm just going to make an object to put on there. And then I can, then we can show you all the fun things you can do with this background. This is where I originally ended it and then I started playing with it and I thought, discovered all the things we can do. So I'm just gonna make another little ellipse. It doesn't even have to be perfect. And we're gonna change the color to something that goes with the blue, orange, I guess. All right, so we're just gonna make ourselves a little ball. So come over here and click on layer effects. And first we're just gonna make an outer shadow, smooth the radius up. I move it up a lot and the offset. Now you need to decide where you want your light to come from. I want the light to come from the top right. So I need to move this shadow over to this side. So we need to click over here until we get it where we want it. Let's try, oh, wrong way. I'm still going the wrong way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's try 190. That looks pretty good. Because if the light was coming down this way, then the shadow would be back there. All right, but that's too much shadow. I'm gonna pull back. I just moved it out a whole lot. Oh, there we go. I 
actually want there. There we go. I don't want it super dark. I just wanted it to kind of set it apart from the background a little. Okay, now we're gonna go click on the 3D. And the layer, or the radius and the depth, sorry, um, move together. You can click in this box and make the number bigger if you want, which I always do. Let's try 150. There we go. Because if you don't, then it looks more like a button. We wanted to get rid of that little dent here and make it look like a ball. And I'm going to get rid of this, or lower the specular. I don't think I'm going to totally get rid of it, but I don't want a big one. <laughs> it was too shiny for me. You can do whatever you want with it. And it's already, the direction's already kind of where I want it. If it wasn't, you could just, you know, play around with this. Move it till you get it to where you like it. Oh, I think I messed it up, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to click Close. And I also like to add a light layer. So go to Layer, New Live Filter, and go to Lighting. And make sure this layer is only on the new ball that we just made. And point it to where the light's coming from. And then, because this makes, this can make for some good shadows on the back there. Just drag these in. Just play around with it until you get it the way you like it. You can change the direction of your light, size of your light, the brightness of your light. You can change the ambient light. All kinds of stuff. All right. And now our little ball needs a shadow, so we're going to make another little ellipse, nice flat one, and change the color to, I like to use about 80 or 70% black, somewhere in there. I'm not total black. I just don't think it looks as natural. And then we're going to change it to multiply. And then we're going to come up here to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And oh, we blurred it out of existence. Let's drag that back a bit. We want it to be kind of like the shadow in the back, maybe a little darker. Click apply. And then over here, drag that layer, the shadow layer, under the ball. There we go. And pull it up. Oh, I made another one. Get the move tool, and then pull it up. All right. Or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to get it just right. Let's see where it's at. That's pretty good. All right, now we're gonna make the room have light also because the ball has the light, but there's the, the room is very flat. So we're gonna make a new pixel layer and we're gonna get the brush tool. Just click B on your keyboard. And with that same 80% black, I'm going to just sort of brush in some shadows. There'll be some shadows behind the ball here. Maybe up on the wall. And if you do too many, just erase them. <laughs> Sometimes I get carried away and I realize I've done way too many shadows. So just, I'm just going to put some in here. All right, and then change it to multiply. And it already looks pretty good, but now we're going to just lighten it up a bit. And if you don't like it, you can go back and put more. You can make them extra dark in some spots. All right. And now I'm going to put a light source over here. And you can really do that a lot of ways. You can just put an overlay in here. But I'm just going to make a really quick ball, another ball. And we're going to make this one white. And then we're going to go to filters and we're going to blur it a lot. Like it about, I don't know, we'll start at 150. See how that looks. That's not quite enough. 200. Eh, 250. All right, that's not too bad. And click apply. And now you can just move that around any way you want. Drag it out. So now we've got a nice soft light coming in our window here, or whatever's over there. Falling onto the ball, and then there's some shadows where it's darker. Definitely need to work on the shadows, but you get the idea. You can play around with it. And then originally, when I was practicing this, this is where I stopped. But then I started playing with the background and I discovered you can do more with it. So we're going to click on the polka dot layer and go down here to effects. And we can change the color right here. It's so easy. Just click on color overlay and come up here to color and you can make it 
any color you want. Just whatever you feel like. We're going to make them, well, we'll make purple today. I like purple. And you can do anything else you want. Uh, sometimes I played around with inner shadow and that kind of had a nice look to it. So maybe we'll just leave that there. You don't have to. You can do inner glow. You can do anything you want. You can try and make them 3D. You know, just have fun with it. So click close. And then I thought that the background, the fill layer, the blue fill layer here was kind of boring too. So if you go up here to layer, new live filter layer, colors, and then go to procedural texture, you can add a texture really easily. And my favorite ones to use are these noise ones, the parallel noise, parallel noise or parallel noise? I'm not sure. And then any of these work pretty well too, but you can try them all if you want. I'm just going to use, we'll use oils. Oh, we need to bring it above. There we go. It needs to be in between. And you can put it above the circles and then the pattern will be on everything. We'll do that in a minute. And change it to overlay or soft light. We'll do overlay. And then you can play around with the turbulence, the brightness. You can make it a little darker, a little brighter, whatever you want to do. And then click OK. You can also change the opacity of it. That looks pretty good. And then if you want it to be on the circles, just drag that layer above it and then it's on the whole thing. And I actually think these circles are too dark, so we are going to change the opacity a bit. Kind of lighten them up, kind of blend them into the background a little more. And I don't like the little texture up there, so we're going to pull it back. All right, so I like that better. I thought it was better than plain. <laughs> so you can play with these any way you want. You can put anything you want down here and add extra shadows. You know, it's your picture. You do it however you want to do it. So I hope you found something useful in this video. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. And thanks for watching.